I gotta tell you a secret. What? I like pigs! I'm fishing I'm the master at snagging but I also really like to go in and retrieve lures that I find so I've got a snag right there but I'm gonna retrieve that lure so now we're gonna have another lure okay so I found what we had hooked and it's actually a triple hook you're not allowed to use these on this river but Eric and I have found a few so we won't be using it and there's no lure anyways but we'll save the weights and I will save the hook for another river that it's more appropriate on Okay, today we are out here at a river that is not too far away from our house and we are catching pinks. That is what is running right now in the rivers closest to us. Eric and I have been coming down here to catch our limit and then we go ahead and can the fish. We brine them and smoke them prior to canning them and we are just putting those away for the winter. They actually are a pretty tasty fish but there is a little bit of controversy on that but we do like them and we don't have to travel very far for them so that is one of our reasons that we like pinks. Today we are going to do a catch and cook 
We're going to try to catch our limit and then we're gonna head home. Eric's gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about what kind of setup we're using and what's been working for us. All right, today we each brought two poles. We brought kind of our lighter rods that we usually use for trout fishing and lake fishing. And then we also brought our bigger rods that we use for salmon fishing. These ones are set up with 25 pound test line. And believe it or not, this right here is a bass fishing setup and this is working great to catch these pink salmon. And then this lighter rod, this is only set up with, I believe, a six pound test line. And we're using just small jigs. This little guy seems to be working good. But I think our favorite jigs are these Russian River Flies. And we use these with just one weight and we basically cast up the river and you bounce it down the river. And the river we're fishing today is no bait and you can only use a single hook. So this is what we're going with today and this is what has been working really good for us. What we've been finding is these fish are responding anything from plastic worms, jigs, flies, rooster tail lures, you name it, they're biting it. It's just trying to find what they're biting at that time. So bring a lot of different lures and jigs with you to try out. Also the time of day you come out here is going to make a huge difference and sometimes we'll come out and we'll catch our limit which is three fish each in about 10 minutes and sometimes it'll take us two hours so you just got to keep trying these fish are really fun to catch and really aggressive once you hook one all right so we've probably been out here for close to an hour today we got a couple fish on the stringer already we're going to see if we can catch our limit and then we're going to head home fillet them up and cook them Okay, now that we're back at the cabin, we are gonna get these fish filleted. And these fish are also known as humpies because they, the males, when they start to spawn, they get this big hump on their back. And that's in comparison to what a female looks like. All right, so with a, a male like this, with the big hump on its back, you're gonna get a really white meat. So this male's meat is gonna be a lot pinker. He hasn't been spawning as long. So that's a nice fillet. All right, so that's what we ended up with. That's six fish. And we're gonna cook one of these up, just normal with a little salt and pepper on it. And then another one we are going to make a dip out of. So most of the time we use these fish carcasses for dog food. We just cook it down in a pot like this full of water and then we put it in jars and freeze it for them but we have so much of that put away that our freezer is full so this is going to go into the compost for the garden next year. compost pile that we are working on and it is horse manure that we picked up there's also reindeer manure in there too and a lot of our extra stuff that we've been pruning from the garden but what I really wanted to show you is we have a volunteer squash in the back and I actually don't even know what kind it is it came it's not one of our own it came with the manure and it is growing in completely 100% horse manure we haven't watered it although it has been raining and it also doesn't even get that much sun. So I just wanted to show that stuff can grow in a very high level of manure and clearly it's doing very well and setting some squash. So like Eric mentioned before, we are cooking down the salmon 
for two different reasons. One, the salmon does come with worms sometimes, or it does have worms in it sometimes. So we just feel like it's better to cook it down for them. And when we cook it down, we get this really awesome like mush. And I know it's not very appetizing, but the dogs freaking love it. So it's, it's awesome for us. And our freezer behind me is completely full with this and some containers for the dogs. So we've just been trying to go through it and give them all the fish they want to eat. Okay, we got our little campfire going and we are gonna cook this fish. We're gonna try to do it as simple as possible and give you guys our honest review of how pink salmon tastes. So we just got our two fillets here, salt and pepper. One of them we're gonna eat, the other one we are gonna mix in with a dip and we'll let you know how they are. All right, this salmon's done. It only takes a few minutes on each side to cook. We are gonna sit down and try some. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try the salmon. We have tried it once before, so I'm interested to see if this one tastes the same. So it pretty much tastes the same as it did last time. You added salt and pepper to it? Mm -hmm. It just tastes like salt and pepper. It actually tastes very similar to trout, which we are more familiar with eating. And we have already canned some, mm -hmm. and we brined some and smoked it, and we've kind of tried it different ways. And once it's smoked or canned, it actually tastes a lot more like salmon, a really mild salmon flavor, but right now I'd say it tastes like trout. Yeah, I agree. It's really, um, it's really good. So if, honestly, if you catch this fish and you've never tried it and you just go and buy what other people say, I'd try it because it, to me it's just like a trout but with a lot more meat on it. So this fish runs pretty close to our home. It's very affordable for us to go and fish them even on a daily basis if we want. Just for us it's a very practical fish. We do like the way it tastes but again it's really just realistic and practical for us. We can put a bunch away and can them for this winter. Alright then another way we're going to try it is we're going to add it to this dip I made and it's just some kefir yogurt, cucumber, dill, jalapeno and a little bit of vinegar. The jalapeno is spicy. Yes. It's got a little heat. So the dip Eric made is really good. It's another fun way to eat this salmon. Another way we've tried it, I think, is salmon patties, and that was really mm -hmm. good too. It basically just takes on the flavor of whatever you cook it in. So again, I think it's a really good fish. I know it's not for everyone, but I'm really enjoying it tonight. <laughs> so this is really good, but I think my favorite way to eat it so far has been brined and smoked and then canned. So all in all, I think this is a pretty awesome fish. They're really fun to catch. There's tons of them in the river we live by, and they taste great. It was nice to have this for fresh eating tonight, but we are gonna focus on canning and getting food stored away for the winter. And next up the rivers are the chum salmon and the silver salmon. So we'll start to see those showing up soon.